doing some manly stuff, barbecuing out by the pool and preparing some chicken for the week ahead. Actually, it probably only lasts me about a day, but we are officially inside of four weeks out from the Mr. Olympia. Today is Saturday, October 7th, and I figured I'd start vlogging a little bit. I think I'm gonna vlog a little bit throughout the week, a little bit here and there, and kind of give you guys a little insight to my week as we progress up to the Olympia. And today, we're barbecuing some chicken. So, honestly, chicken has been the only lean protein source I've been able to eat. For some reason, we had fish in place, and the fish just started upsetting my stomach. I'm just, I was having some digestive issues. Went from white fish, tried shrimp. That wasn't working, I don't know what it was. But I'm not mad. I'm not really that big a fan of white fish. So, chicken breast it is. Got the chicken on deck. I'm gonna eat my pre-workout meal, and we're gonna go train. Jasmine and I both are training shoulders today. So I show you guys a little bit of what we're doing in the gym. And then I actually turned on the pool heater today because we were having a little bit of a heat wave. And I think we might swim today. And I'm a sissy when it comes to cold water. So I wanna get that water warm. So yeah, I'll take you guys a little bit through today and uh, maybe do some eating, some training, and maybe a little bit of swimming. Chicken is cooked and cut. And Wally's here helping me, right? Poor guy really wants some of that chicken, but he has an allergy to chicken, and if I give him some chicken, he will pee out of his butt. So, that's no good. Diarrhea, itchy feet, all of it. So, sorry buddy. No chicken for you, big guy. Okay. I know you guys. If I talk about food, and I don't show you the food, everyone gets upset. So here it is, got 150 grams of white rice, 224 grams of chicken, and then 35 grams of avocado. Same meal I had last time pre-workout. But I know I didn't show you guys me eating it. And there's a lot of fetish folk out there that wanna see the food go in the mouth. So and eating it is an important part of what you guys want. So cheers. Hope that satisfies everybody. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna finish this meal in private. Look at the dogs just trailing behind you desperately. What do you got? 100 rice and 140 chicken. 100 rice, 140 chicken. Well, I only have 150 grams of rice. Oh, you look sad, Bailey. Did no one get you food? Bailey. Sorry. <laughs> Eating it. Barbecue. Look at that. Skills. Ooh, it's brand new. Ooh, nice. That's how you do it? Yep. That's how you puncture it? Mm. Where's the scooper? Is the scooper hidden? Nope. Oh, right on top. Take all the aluminum foil off. I did. Nope, there's still more. I'm Get it all. Oh. Get it all. Focus. Focus. I think that's perfect. Yeah, let's do that. That's the one. Perfect. Pre HD Ultra. Peach rings. Use her code Jazzy10. Yes, sir. Or my code, Shire10. Pick your poison. Pick wisely. I think I forgot that that's my favorite flavor. I think you should take out this trash. It's really good. I gotta take out the trash. Okay, I gotta take out the trash, guys. Sorry. Just smash it down. There you go. Trash taken out. Hey, look at my motorcycle that I never ride. Pretty cool, right, Wally? Pussy got you. Hell no. This pussy got you. Is this your playlist? <laughs> this is what she listens to when she takes this beautiful drive into the gym. Pussy Got You Hooked by 3-6 Mafia. A classic. A timeless classic. Memes when it's like you're in the back of somebody's car at 2 a.m. and the music's blaring. Your parents don't know where you are. Yes. That, that's what the That's 3-6 Mafia. The music's blaring is 3-6 Mafia. Yeah. For me it was like I would listen to a lot of Too Short with my brother. 
we'd always be like banging blowjob Betty <laughs> in his uh, in his little Nissan pickup, rolling around looking for blowjob Bettys. My brother was a deviant. No, you weren't. No, I wasn't. I was very straight edge guy. I would never. I hated blowjob Bettys. <laughs> Made me sick. So you said you'd bribe homeless men to buy you wine? Vegas. A friend of mine used to sell those really big, like glass jugs. Oh, like the like the Carla like Ross. the two and a half gallon jugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. They would bribe homeless men to buy us, and I, you would just get sick puking. Oh, for sure. My, we used to. Uh, my brother used to sell weed when we were young. Still sells weed. We sell weed for a living. It's what we do. So not much has changed, but. We had some kids at the skate park that we would pay to go steal 40s for us and Mad Dog 20. So they would go and they would put Mad Dog 20 down their, uh, down their pants and smuggle it out of Safeway you couldn't find an for adult, like a, a bowl. An adult to do it for you. Well, you couldn't find an adult to do it for a five sack of weed. No, we didn't have we didn't have a cool mom buying us booze. She was a cool mom. Did you guys ever? Um, did you guys ever like bribe? I guess we just, we always bribe people with weed because Jason always had weed. So we'd go to like, uh, um, like the do jelly donut, 24 hour donut spot. And we'd give the, the cook there like one little nug of weed this big and he'd give us all the donuts we wanted. We'd go to fucking Taco Bell. We'd be like, hey, you guys want some weed? We'd give him a little bit of weed and they'd give us all the Taco Bell we wanted. So honestly, I think that was what inspired. It was more like I had to bat my eyelashes. Okay, yeah, so, so girls got pretty eyelashes and and we had weed. So, I had weed and eyelashes, that makes the world go round. 3-6 Mafia to Macy Gray. This is more my speed. Yeah. We need a diverse collection. Remember that, everybody. You can't just focus on one genre of anything. You need to have some gangster shit, and then you need to have some soft stuff that makes you feel good in here. Alright? Now... Macy Gray before we train.
Well, I know yesterday I said we were gonna do some swimming, but we got home from the gym and we were just too lazy. Yesterday was one of those days that it just took everything to just exist. So when we got home, we ate and we went right to the couch and just relaxed. But now we're all in our swimming gear and we are going to take a dip in the pool. Iced coffees first, and then we'll do a little bit of swimming and a little bit of lounging. Yeah, that's gonna take forever. Get the pump. We got a pump. All right, we're heading to the pool. Oh! Jeez, that was a tidal wave. from HD Muscle. They even bagged it, so it didn't get wet. All right, well, it's a new day. As you guys see, yesterday was a rest day done right. We just chilled, we swam, we ate, not much food, but just relaxed. Honestly, I value those days a lot, and right now in prep, they're so damn necessary. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of people that talk about like the no days off thing, and honestly, that is nonsense. These days off are so incredibly valuable, and I always find on the back end of those days, like today is Monday, and I'm going to deadlift, and I feel fresh, I feel excited to train, and I'm ready. And yesterday, the only thing I wanted to do was chill and do nothing. So that rest day actually gave me exactly what I needed to feel reinvigorated and ready to train. But more than anything, I think just go, 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 especially in like a contest prep setting, it's just not realistic. You know, you really can't, you know, have your foot down all the time. You need to know when to pull back. It's always gotta be a game of push and pull. And I always find on the back end of these rest days, especially rest day that I'm able to just manage fatigue and just chill like yesterday hanging out by the pool all day like those type of days I always find that I have like a new low weight after those days my body clears inflammation I'm rested I'm fresh and uh, that's exactly what I got today I woke up down a pound from the day before and I just feel excited ready to go I'm like three and a half weeks out and I'm ready to go deadlift and I'm excited but I've got a little bit of work stuff to do today so I've got to head into my farm and uh, lay eyes on some stuff. We're actually doing some harvesting. So I just have to go, uh, go be the boss for a little bit. All right, well, you guys are always wanting to see a little bit of my operation. So here we are inside of one of my greenhouses and checking out some flower. I have three of these greenhouses. And then I have a big outdoor canopy as well. And then I also have a few indoor rooms inside of my building. But yeah, so this is next on the chopping block. I'll show you guys a little bit here. Yeah, so this weather's kind of shitty, but luckily we're inside and this stuff is all protected and doing quite well. So just here to kind of go through, lay eyes on stuff see what is mature and what's ready to go kind of make a decision on what needs to be cut down what can go a little bit longer you know the things I look at here are just like uh, you know like trichomes start to amber when they finish and I know a lot of these strains I've grown before so I just know how many weeks they run how many days they run in their flowering cycle so that's kind of my consideration but I just kind of want to look at things make sure that um, there's no pests or anything present like that. Make sure everything's healthy and make sure we are all good to cut and have a successful harvest. Yep. Oh boy. Now everybody at the gym is gonna smell weed on me. You smell good. That's one I'll never get sick of hearing. Here is where my outdoor canopy was. It is all taken down, harvested. Luckily before the rain came, my team knocked it out. Looks good. 
All right, so done at the farm. Now we're at the gym. I'm just going to eat my pre-workout meal here in the car. Honestly, I like to give it about 45 minutes before I train. So I'm gonna eat this, chill for a little bit. Luckily, it's my place of business, so I'll go in and uh, maybe I'll tighten a few dumbbells or something and tinker around while my food digests. And then I will have some pre-workout, pre-HD Elite today. Then we're gonna do some deadlifts. Like I said, it's Monday. We pull floor Mondays. So, gonna eat, pre-workout, then train. I'll catch you guys inside. That is top set of stiff leg deadlifts done. That wasn't a PR from a load standpoint, but that is the most reps I've ever done with that weight. So I'm happy. Um, I've been kind of doing a block where I'm doing 10, eight, six. So tens, sets of eight, sets of six. Last week I did a heavy six. That was my heavy eight. That went really well. And honestly, right now, being this close to the show, my biggest priority is just maintaining like the integrity of these sets. So like rep integrity, set integrity, making sure that I'm not seeing form breakdown within my sets and also just being safe. You know, I do feel like that last week where I did that heavy set of six, it's probably the last time I'll enter that, that load range. So I probably won't be going that heavy up until the show, regressing in load and then aiming for like sets of 10 to 12 as we progress into the show. But today, that felt really good. And uh, I know my execution was right where I wanted it, so I'm happy with that. What I've been doing with my back off set, I've actually been doing a set of paused RDLs. So instead of the stiff leg off the floor, I'll do more of an RDL, shoot the hips back, load the glutes and hams, pause the plates right off the floor, and then pull. And uh, right now, for three and a half weeks out, I feel pretty damn good. All right, I'm gonna keep training. That is back and hamstrings done. Three weeks and five days or so out from the Olympia. Today is Monday, Olympia is Friday, so we're just kind of inside that four week out window. But honestly, just saying that is, uh, man, it's so surreal. You know, as, as much as I've like 
conditioned myself to believe that I was going to make this happen. It's uh, still pretty unbelievable that I'm here, my rookie season, preparing for the Olympia. And, uh, man, it's, it's, uh, it still hasn't really quite set in yet. And I don't know if it'll set in until I'm really on that stage or if it'll be years down the road when my career's over that I kind of finally look back and actually acknowledge it. Um, but right now I'm just doing my best to really be present and, uh, and soak it all in. You know, I think anybody that's done this, a lot of you watching, I'm sure are competitors or, you know, bodybuild in some fashion. So you understand the sacrifices it takes. You understand that, you know, there's times that you miss out with your family. There's times you miss with your loved ones. There's holidays you don't celebrate. There's, you know, fam family gatherings. And, you know, even you guys see me today at work. You know, like even my business has had to take a back seat a little bit. And I'm lucky enough that I have amazing, supportive, and loving people in my corner that help me with these things. You know, I'm business partners with my brother. I'm also business partners with my wife at the gym. And uh, we have really good people that help, you know, when I'm in these phases, you know, almost three weeks out from a show, it's, it's really hard to be fully present when you're focused on this primary goal, you know, and the, and the Olympia is a big one, man. It's huge. You know, I've, uh, I told myself even when I was preparing for nationals in 2021, you know, I said, I'm going to win my, pro, win my pro card. We're taking the year off and winning my fucking pro debut. And I'm going to the Olympia. You know, I conditioned myself. I believed it. I told myself that fucking constantly, you know, I have log books in my phone that say day one of winning your pro card. The next log book was day one of winning your pro debut, you know? So every time I open my log book in my phone, that's what these things are saying. You know, that is what I was constantly reminded of as I open my phone, just to log my, my training sessions, you know, but here we are. And I'm almost three weeks out from this show and it just still hasn't quite set in, you know, it's kind of just unbelievable. So I'm really doing my best to try to just really acknowledge how fucking awesome this is and how special this is and not let the stress of it all get to me. I mean, honestly, right now I don't have, not a lot of people are talking about me, you know, I'm not in a lot of people's, you know, it, when people are doing, uh, their predictions, you know, I'm not necessarily in anybody's top 10 prediction, you know, and, and, uh, that's okay. I'm glad that there's no pressure on me. You know, it's like the one year that I'm going in and the only pressure on me is the pressure that I'm, I'm putting on myself, you know? And uh, that's a really, for me, a great way to enter this. And I am placing some pressure on myself because I really want to do well. But most importantly, I want to enjoy myself. I want to enjoy the prep. I want to be present. I want to take in the experience. And uh, that's what's really important to me right now is really kind of being present and acknowledging that uh, these are the good old days, man. You know, this is the, these are the times that you're going to look back at in 10, 20 years and... Um, you know, wish you could relive. And uh, I'm trying to realize that now because I think we never realize it's the good old days until it's too late, you know? So that's really what I'm trying to do right now. And um, I'm grateful to kind of be able to catalog this and be able to share this with you and have this like running diary of these times. So I know I'm gonna be able to look back at this and it's, um, it's gonna be really special. And I appreciate all the support. You know, I don't take that for granted. I know you guys support me. You guys support the people that support me and, um, that allows me to do this, you know, and, and everybody tuning in to watch these vlogs, encouraging me in the comment sections. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a very special thing and I value it a lot. So you guys comment below let me know if you want to see more of these videos. I'll keep these coming. I have my filmer coming with me to Orlando, so I'm going to have some high quality content for the show itself. But leading up, I want to make sure that I can continue to do these vlogs, kind of bring you in on the day to day as we progress into the Olympia because you guys seem to really like the vlog that we just dropped. So I wanna to continue to do this for you, for me. And like I said, just have something to look back on, you know, as the years progress and um, create a little bit of a diary of this, of this career and this journey. And uh, you guys are the one inspiring me to do it. So I really appreciate it. Anyway, I appreciate you guys and we will catch you on the next one.